Si je m'épanche sur toi, c'est que je Happy New Year! It's our first project of 2021. I've decided this year that the first project of every month, for the first week of each month, is going to be some type of lingerie, sleepwear, undergarment type of project. So we're going to be doing one a month. And I'm very excited about it. So we're kicking off 2021 with a new pattern for underwear. This is Quick Sew 3881. It's a good basic pattern. It has your briefs, a bikini, a low rise, and a thong all in there. So we're going to try the um, low rise pattern today. I've traced it off. The pattern comes multi-sized, which I love, but I want to test it out. So I'm not gonna cut it all up. I'm gonna trace off my sizes. I can keep reusing this pattern. I think I spent under $9 for this pattern. So it was very practical. Um, cost-wise and it has so many pieces in it you can just use it again and again and again so I've traced off my size for view C it's just three pieces two of them are cut on the fold and then the crotch piece in one of the lining so let me show you some of the fabrics that we could be using um, and I'll show you the one that I for sure I'm going to use a beautiful soft mesh like this um, you can also combine this with lace or with a nice soft stretchy knit this is a nice heavy knit which would be great for like a control top type of underwear um, and so is this one another control top type underwear uh, i love adding lace to something like that so i have some really beautiful and this is a stretch lace though you can use a non-stretch lace if you're just putting it in little pieces like along the edge of the leg or um, as a stripe down the side but what we're going to do today, because this is sort of my practice one, I'm seeing how it fits and how I like it. I'm using a good old fashioned traditional Trico knit. This is one that I've had for a long time in my stash. It's pretty roses. And I've made this a few times for other people, but I haven't used it for myself yet. So I'm going to make this for me. And I think I will go ahead and apply um, some lace, potentially. We'll see how it goes, but I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little lace to it. So this is, I think I'll go with the contrasting lace of burgundy. I have the Pico elastic already in red, so that's what I think I will use for this. I've traced everything off with my pattern tracing paper in my sizes, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces out, lay out my fabric, and cut. And remember, you want to find a nice cotton knit for the crotch lining. You can use the same fabric in both places for the outer and the inner, but hygienically and health-wise, and comfort wise, you're gonna be much happier if you go with a plain white cotton or a natural cotton for the inside crotch. No one can see it and it's better for you. Well, after cutting out my first um, underwear pair, which was the Hipster View C, I started looking at it and it's the traditional, it's just like the last underwear we did where it has the crotch as one piece and then a lining, um, which is great. Not, but not exactly what I want to do. So we are going to go ahead and make this one, but I went back and I cut out view A. And I want to show you something. View A is more like your granny pant. It's your true brief type underwear. It's also, if you like the vintage look, um, the rockabilly, the 50s, that sort of thing, this is the one you would want on this pattern. So it's view A, quick sew 3881. So I'm gonna just unpin the front real quick and show you some things. If we compare our two pattern pieces, first of all, here's the hipster and here's the brief. And I'm just gonna hold them up. Can you see the leg difference? See how the brief comes up just a little bit higher and the hipster is a little lower. Depending on your body, you may want a little bit higher leg. Depends on how your joints are in your hips. I do, I prefer a little bit higher leg in the front, not in the back. I like a full back and a higher front just because of where the elastic hits on my body. So you have to kind of think about that when you're sewing for yourself. I'm gonna open this up. This is the View A underwear front. And I'm just gonna show you, if you wanted to do applique, or if you wanted to do some lace insets, that sort of thing, um, depending on what you're doing, you would do it first. So before we ever put anything together, I could take my pretty lace like this, and I could pin it down where I want it and zigzag it on. And then you could leave it just like that. So you just have lace over your fabric or you can come back and cut away your um, underneath fabric, your trico, so that you have a sheer lace panel in it. And that's very, if you're doing the 50s look, 
doing um, a strip of lace like this or along the leg like this is very, very, very 50s. They also would do it along the waist. What I have done in the past is I have sewn them together and then where the seam was on the side, I've taken away and I've done the applique there too. So I am going to um, do lace on the brief style and I will show you. I'm gonna go ahead and decide where I wanna put it and then I will show you how to stitch it on and trim it away. And then I think I'm gonna just leave the, the hipster one plain, just as is. So we're gonna make two pair of underwear. It'll go really fast because underwear is fast. I really am gonna be focusing mostly on the view A pattern though because it's a little bit so different sewing technique and it has the self-enclosed crotch which is really pretty and comfortable and I wanna make sure you understand that. So I'm going to decide where I want to lay my lace and I'm going to see you at the sewing machine to applique it on. All right, the lace has been applied. This is it from the back side. And you can see how I have my pieces hanging off, but it makes it very easy for me once it's stitched to see exactly where to trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off real quick, just like this. And once it's trimmed, All right, so this side's been trimmed. Now I could leave it just like this and it's perfect. But if you would like this to be a sheer lace piece, take your scissors or um, I like to use my duck bills, my applique scissors. We're inserting the duck bill between the two layers and you wanna put the round side in. If you put the pointy side in, you're likely to poke through but it makes it just glide right between the two layers. And you can just trim it off just like that. And now I have a sheer panel. I'm just gonna trim off the other side. It's a much shorter little seam. And for this one, I'm gonna lay it down. Again, putting the round side to the inside and cutting next to the stitches So now, this is my piece I'm discarding. And this is how it looks. It's pretty. And it's sheer right in that little panel. Ta-da! Okay, I'm gonna do the other side. And then we're ready to start putting them together. Now that I've got the lace applied to the front, I'm ready to put the underwear together. So we're going to start with the um, view A first and we're going to take the back and our two crotch pieces and full disclosure, I cannot find my cotton crotch lining anywhere. So this is a um, another Trico knit that's just plain, that doesn't have the pattern to it that I'm using for the crotch lining for this project because I just cannot find it and I'm not gonna go to a store and I don't want to wait for it to arrive we're gonna get this done so I can show you the sewing process. Take your back. And we're going to sandwich this seam between our two crotch pieces. So we're gonna use the right sides together of our, of our fashion fabric. So we're gonna put that on the right side and then on the wrong side. Can you see the static in that? I don't know if you can see it. See how it's, it's very static here. Um, I'm gonna take the other piece to the wrong side. So now this seam is sandwiched between the right side crotch or the fashion fabric crotch and the lining of the crotch. And we're just going to pin that on this little seam. So this is how it looks pinned. This is the um, back side and this is the inside. And what will happen is these two crotch pieces will fold over like that and close the seam so you will have no seam against your body. Pretty nifty. So now I'm just gonna go to the serger and search this. I'm pretty sure this is quarter inch seam allowance. So that's what I'm going to do. If you're at home, you don't have an overlock machine, a serger, just set your machine for a zigzag and zigzag on your quarter inch line. It works just as well. So here's how the seam looks. Look at how pretty that is. 
I just love how it's all enclosed and lovely. So now we're going to attach the front. Now we haven't done anything with our side seams. It's much easier when you make underwear to start with the crotch as a rule. Depends on the pattern, but this pattern, most patterns, this is the case. So now we're gonna just take only our um, fashion fabric crotch side or our right side crotch to our right side front at the crotch and we're gonna pin those together. And this is the tricky part. Now this is what's different when we do the other view, the hipster view. It does not have the completely self-enclosed crotch, which is also like the other patterns that we've done in the past, which I'll put a eye card and links in the um, doohickey below. Front panty to front crotch. Now we're going to come down here where our crotch lining is. And we're going to just pull all this up. So make sure you don't twist it, make sure it's straight. Grab that crotch lining. It's gonna come around. Everything's just loose inside and we're going to pin together crotch lining now on that same seam. And what happens when we flip it around is now this is another self-enclosed seam. So it's much more comfortable to wear. So let me pin this and then I will um, show you how it looks pinned and then I'll sew, sew it, show you how it looks sewn then we'll flip it and you'll really get how it looks. So I'm going to pin this together real quick. All right, all pinned together. So here's my first seam that I did. Everything's just kind of bunched down on the inside so that I'm only catching my three layers, which is my crotch um, lining and regular piece. And then sandwiched in between is the front. All right, so now I'm ready to sew it and then we'll flip it. We're stitched. This is how it looks right now, but when I flip everything around, now, this is the outside. Here's my front, here's my back, and then look at the inside. There's no seam against the body. That's a self-enclosed little crotch, and it's beautiful, and it feels better to wear. So this one's completely done in the crotch line. All that's left now is to go ahead and serge her side seams. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put together my other pattern, um, my other view. So after I get it to the point where it's together before elastic, I'm going to stop and sew the other one. This pair is completely put together. This is the wrong side, but I have it. Um, it's ready for elastic. So we're to the elastic part for those. Now here's my hipster pair. And what I've done is I have pinned together at the crotch front to back. And then it has a crotch lining that gets pinned on the other side. So we're sandwiching the back with the front and the crotch lining. And I did decide, I sat down and started putting this together and I thought, you know what? I have all that pretty lace. So I just put a little V in the front and I didn't uh, trim away the back. So it just has a little pretty lace application in the front like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew, got it cut on the pin. So we're going to sew that. And then this is ready to be put together at the side seam also. And then it's elastic. A quick little tip if you're at the overlock and pinning is to pin so the heads are to the left. Two things, it's easier to pull them away from the knife to pin so that they're not going to hang out in the way of the knife. And you're much less likely to just slice one off on accident. So I'm pinning to the left and then I pull them up so that the little tips um, are not near the knife and then I always pull it out. You can see where this one is arranged. It's before the needles and it's not near the knife so I can just pull it out when I'm ready to start. My hipsters are put together at the side seam. I stitched down the inner lining. There's no seam there so I zigzagged it. This is from the outside. There's a tiny zigzag. It's hard to see which is great and here it is from the inside. Most patterns just have it stitched at the leg elastic and held down and it's sort of open. It's actually kind of like a little hole there. It'll roll. The more you wash it, the more that little piece will roll. It'll make a little lump. It's not gorgeous. I would definitely stitch it down. Um, so I'm, this is, again, a lot of this stuff is covered in my um, other videos that I will link below. The elastic um, method that I'm going to do on this one, um, which is serge it, turn it, triple zigzag it on the sewing machine is already covered. So um, 
you can just go back and see that at the other video there are time stamps so it's easy to find exactly what you need i'm not going to keep recover cover it over and over again at each one um, i've done the elastic method like the patterns call for and it's always too loose in my opinion it depends on you how you like the fit etc but for me the elastic is so loose it doesn't even hardly it doesn't stretch it doesn't do anything it doesn't cling to your body like i like it to so i have my revised undies that show how i prefer to do elastic to get a little bit better fit and when you have a narrow elastic it's soft it stretches nice it's not going to be too tight or binding as a rule so elastic is next and then these undies are done i have decided i was going to do pico edge but with this my pico is red and my lace is burgundy and they're just off enough that i don't don't like it now if i had not put the lace on the red would have been fine um, so i'm going to just do um, regular elastic it's this sometimes it's called braided elastic it's just a traditional narrow elastic so i'm going to use this you can't see it it'll be on the inside so i'm doing elastic next and then i'll show you my completed undies a quick reminder to start and stop your elastic in the center crotch underneath where it can't be seen so that when you turn and stitch everything disappears elastic is in um, just searched in i haven't done the final stitching yet but you can kind of just see here's the view a and here is view C, I think it's the hipster. So now I'm just going to go to the sewing machine, fold it over once. We do the triple zigzag all the way around on the top side, on the right side, and they're done. I think I'm going to um, see the light stitching on there. I think where the burgundy is, I'm going to switch my thread color just on the burgundy spot so it's mostly going to be um, zigzagged in the ivory because it just disappears and then i'm going to skip any burgundy sections and come back and do the triple zigzag on just those little sections in burgundy just because it makes me happy and it's prettier and then we're done i like this pattern a lot i'm just going to tell you now this quick sew pattern is great i in general like quick sew i think they make very good especially undergarment patterns and active wear patterns really good stuff quick close-up of the triple zigzag it's very attractive sews it nice it makes it nice and flat and it's super stretchy and I am using my even feed foot. They turned out so cute. Look at that. I think it's really worth it to go back and change the co thread color where there's such an extreme color difference like this. I wouldn't have liked to see the beige thread on top of that burgundy lace. So here is view A. This is almost identical to my vintage pattern from the 1950s. Um, underwear that I used to make when I had my uh, my lingerie company. So I really like this. If you want to do sort of that vintage look, View A is the way to go. Um, if you're going for the 60s and 70s when they went to the low rise, View C is it, and that's still popular today. So sort of the hipster look and turned out really cute. Again, I really like this pattern. Um, I wish that all of the views had the, the separate crotch piece for the front. The hipster one does not. I think the bikini one does though. Um, and then the thong one does not, of course. That wouldn't make sense for the thong shape. But like it, highly recommend it. Go try it out yourself. I will say that my new overlock machine does a cover stitch and there is a way to do a beautiful elastic um, using the cover stitch, but I haven't learned how to use it yet. That's a brand new thing to me. So um, when I learn that, when I figure it all out, I will be um, doing probably just a sewing short only on the cover stitch and elastic, but I definitely will be figuring it out for hemming, which you'll be seeing coming up in our next videos.